All rise. District Court is now in session. Honorable Judge Hitler presiding. Be seated. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon. This is uh, State v. Koberger. I uh, want to go over the appearances uh, this uh, afternoon on behalf of the state. Uh, would state uh, attorneys please represent themselves for the record. Thank you, Your Honor. My name is Bill Thompson. I'm the Lake Huff County Prosecutor. This is Ashley Jennings. She's my senior deputy. And then we have uh, Mr. Nye and Ms. Beatty from the Attorney General's Office. And then we have victim support staff with us. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Defense. Ann Taylor, attorney for Brian Koberger, Elisa Massaw, and Jay Logston, counsel for Mr. Koberger as well. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> like to tell you, I'm happy to be here, but why start with an untruth? Uh, I am uh, accepting of my responsibility to be here. I want to go over with you uh, some um, expectations of mine given that I don't think any of you uh, other than Ms. Massoth have appeared in front of me before. Um, <clears throat> when you file uh, memorandums of law, uh, briefs, et cetera, please provide a word copy by email to my staff attorney. Uh, after uh, today's hearing, you may uh, get that uh, from staff here today. Um, Today, I know there was an issue uh, that was uh, brought up with respect to Mr. Koberger's attire for today. Uh, I did issue an order yesterday permitting him to appear in civilian clothes for this hearing only. Um, that is a matter uh, in terms of future hearings that we will take up in a closed hearing the day of, but in advance of whatever our next hearing date will be. Uh, my intention will be that Mr. Koberger will not be present for that hearing because part of what we will be discussing are security measures. Um, and uh, I expect to hear uh, from the transport deputies and the bailiffs uh, regarding security issues that they want to address or that I have questions for them about um, so that I can uh, make an appropriate ruling in terms of his appearance uh, here, but weighing that not just against, uh, of course, his uh, rights, but also against the needs of security in this case. I do expect, um, as uh, it probably will come to no surprise to you, uh, for you all to get along. I understand the stakes in this case are as high as they can possibly be in any case, but you are professionals. You have taken oaths, both as of uh, officers uh, within your jurisdictions, uh, but also as attorneys before this bar. So I expect at all times for you to uh, remain civil to one another, that you not uh, engage in uh, personal attacks, Ad, hom ad hominem attacks, that you um, not uh, engage in uh, theatrics, um, not misstate the facts or the law to the court, and that when you cite uh, uh, arguments in your briefs, if there is contradictory precedent, I expect to see that. I appreciate in advance uh, what should go without saying that I've just said in terms of your responsibilities. But again, I just want to highlight that because I understand when the stakes are high, uh, sometimes victory seems to be the objective uh, when uh, our first objective is to uh, conform to the oaths that we've taken as uh, members of the bar, as officers of this court. All right. Um, I do have some matters with respect to scheduling that I want to go over today, but before I do that, I'd like to hear from you with respect to the matters that you either need to make me aware of or uh, want to make me aware of. The other thing before I do that, though, um, 
I, I do know that uh, Judge Judge had entered a uh, non-dissemination order. That still remains in place. Um, and unless I, uh, for some reason, uh, remove that order, it will stay in place. And I expect it to be religiously adhered to by all parties, counsel, victims, counsel for the victims. Um, and um, I will not tolerate violations of that. Likewise, I know that uh, much of uh, the evidence uh, in this case has been subject to orders uh, sealing under that dis dissemination order or otherwise have been sealed by the court. Um, I likewise expect uh, everyone to that has access uh, to that uh, information, whether it's sealed documents or information in sealed hearings or the information itself in the documents, uh, to uh, adhere to the confidentiality expected uh, as it relates to those. Okay, that's that's uh, my uh, one and only lecture for you for the remainder of this case. With that, uh, let me hear from you. We'll start with counsel for the state. Your Honor, I don't know that we have uh, specific questions we want to propose today. We're looking forward to hearing the scheduling. I think that's going to drive for us, particularly the distance involved, any questions that we may have. I appreciate what you've already mentioned to us, and we will certainly honor all of that. Thank you, sir. Taylor? Thank you, Your Honor. There are a few issues that I wanted to make the court aware of as the court decides on the scheduling order. We want the court to know that our team has been working towards the June of 2025 trial date that had been issued by Judge Judge in the case. But in candor to the court, I need to let the court know some issues that have come up that we face that causes me concern. First, I'm I think the court's probably aware of the vast amount of discovery that's been exchanged in the case by reviewing the record. But since August, we have received about 398 gigabytes of new information. And I can tell the court that nobody on the team has read every bit of that yet. So there's a vast amount of discovery to continue to go through. And I wanted the court to be aware of that. The second thing is that during the course of this case, we had an expert that we were working with and that expert passed away. We have been able to refill that role to have a new expert to do the work that that expert was hired to do, but we are not progressed to the point that I'd hope to be through no fault of the new expert. The court should be aware of that as well. And last, as the court is very well aware, the system of delivering public defense is changing next week. Um, as appointed counsel in the case, I do not have a contract yet. Um, nobody on my team is under contract for this case. I'm concerned about what that means, and I thought the court should be aware. Further, we have been able to access funding to help us prepare this case through Idaho Criminal Rule 12.2. At the current time, we're working with about 25 experts and investigators to prepare the case. I don't know if 12.2 will continue to be the way to get funding for those experts and investigators, or if that's changing. And I thought the court should know those things. Thank you. Thank you. So I am hopeful that uh, Fredrickson will uh, ensure that a contract is available uh, for you and your team uh, next week. Um, I have no control over that, of course, other than to, uh, as it relates to who I permit to withdraw from this case or not withdraw from this case. Um, as to 12.2 uh, funding, um, my understanding is, and I've had a discussion with Judge Munson, who has been serving, as I understand it, as what we refer to as the money judge. Uh, I've asked him to remain in that capacity, uh, at least uh, through uh, the transition to the state public defense system in uh, next week on October 1. My understanding is, and perhaps, uh, I will come to find out something different, but that once it goes to that system 12.2 as it relates to public defense funded attorneys on contract seeking 12.2 uh, funding, that's no longer a thing, that that would come through the state public defense budget. 
essentially. Um, I guess we'll find out if, if that becomes a problem uh, down the road, but that's my understanding because that whole system that 12.2 is uh, based upon is coming to an end. So um, given your statement about the trial date, um, my proposal to move this case forward into May is probably not going to land well with you, uh, but uh, that's what I wanted to talk about is the timing of the trial. I'm concerned with uh, a trial as currently set uh, for a number of reasons, but first I want to find out from you as you sit here today uh, what that trial looks like in terms of the number of weeks of trial, starting uh, from after a jury is selected uh, through the end of the evidence and before any potential uh, sentencing phase. So uh, what are your estimates of that? Your Honor, I, I think it would be a fair estimate based on what we know at this point uh, to have a month and a half or perhaps a bit more just for the evidence for the guilt phase of the trial. That, I say both, that knowing. Both just, is that just your evidence or does that include defense evidence? Well, I, I was just getting ready to say I, I, I say that understanding or acknowledging that Ms. Taylor has estimated two to three months total. Uh, I do not know. We do not know what the defense has in mind for their case right now. So all I can speak to is what we anticipate for ourselves. But I would think the state's evidence in chief should be able to come in in a month and a half or so. Okay. Ms. Taylor? Your Honor, we estimate four weeks for the defense portion of, of the trial case. Of the guilt phase? Yes, Your Honor. So... 10 weeks um, in terms of if there is a uh, penalty phase, uh, should the defendant be convicted of one of the uh, statutory qualifying uh, offenses, how long do we estimate the uh, penalty phase being? Your Honor, from the state's perspective, I believe we're going to be relying heavily on the evidence that's introduced during the guilt phase um, and that the additional evidence that we brought be brought in unless there's something we learn from the defense about their experts on uh, it is probably take no more than a week. Taylor? Your Honor, I would estimate two weeks for that part of any trial. That's for in, our evidence. For your evidence. Yes. So my concern, uh, because this trial is currently set to begin June 2nd and end approximately August 31st, is um, having it set to run the entire course of the summer, I think we will find to be difficult uh, on jurors in particular. Uh, jurors who may have children who are out of school in terms of uh, uh, being able to uh, spend time going vacations with them, et cetera. That's one concern. Second concern is with school that typically starts uh, in mid to late August um, and uh, jurors or parents who may have kids going off to school, uh, the timing of that through August. And that's my primary concern about that time frame. Um, uh, I had two proposals. One was to uh, start the trial in um, the evidence portion of the trial, the first week of May, um, and the other would be to start the evidence uh, in early September. And I'd like your thoughts on this. I'm not saying I'm have or necessarily will vacate the June trial date, but I want to look at alternatives here because I am concerned about that spread that takes the entirety of the summer. And we, we hear you, Your Honor. I, by way of history, the, the summer, we advocated for that in Lataw County because the courthouse is right across from the high school and the summer would have the students gone. Um, if, if we were looking at the other two choices, we would propose May. Yeah. 
Kayla. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would have to advocate for September um, at this point based on the three reasons that I gave the court before. So I'm, it's, I'm not going to worry about the public defense change because I think that uh, will take care of itself. Um, the, the, the one thing that you brought up the most, I mean, I understand there's a lot of evidence, but you know, May is not tomorrow. May is many months away. Um, so the one that concerns me that you brought up is your expert. Um, and I'm not asking you necessarily to give away any uh, secrets uh, prematurely that you may have in terms of defense strategy, but um, can you help me understand this expert uh, if you're able to and what their role is and what the prospects are? Your Honor, it's really difficult to tell you much about the expert without giving away a lot. I can tell you that this is a very necessary expert for us to have on board. We've been able to find somebody to fill the role. I'm confident in the person that will fill the role. There just hasn't been enough time to get the work accomplished yet. I know that that doesn't tell the court a whole lot more than what I said before, but I really feel that that would disclose too much for me to say more. I could do so on an ex parte basis or with Judge Monson, our resource judge, um, but not in a public setting. I understand. Um, do you anticipate being able to fill you, fulfill your obligations for your current expert disclosure deadline that was set by Judge Judge? Um, no, I, not with a lot of confidence. I think that the work is going to take longer than to meet that deadline. I think if we met that deadline, I would have additional information that I would want to be able to present. And maybe I would have been stopped from that with that deadline. So I don't have a motion to extend that date, obviously. And with the uh, changes that occurred, I understand why you you know didn't file one out of the box. But um, the deadline, I think, is January 6th, something like that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for experts on the defense side. That's one of our deadlines, Your Honor, yes. Um, I guess. Uh, the state have to say anything have anything to say in response not knowing the details of the challenges ms taylor and her team are facing i don't really know how to respond further your honor what do you think is a realistic deadline for you to be able to disclose your experts uh for everything I, i'm assuming it was january all save that one expert um but with respect to the expert you had to replace when do you think you could uh disclose uh, consistent with uh, the scheduling order other than the expert that had to be replaced your honor there were two separate deadlines one was for um, trial experts and one was for mitigation experts and I believe that I can make that deadline other than that one expert. Can you tell me if the one expert is a mitigation or a trial expert? A mitigation expert, Your Honor. And what do you think you need for that mitigation expert in terms of a deadline? Compared to that mitigation deadline was... I believe it was March. I don't recall the exact date. Yeah, so that's a long time from now. So, um, I, yeah, I, I have a lot of questions, but I'm hesitant to ask you the questions uh, because I'm sure you're not uh, in a position to answer them currently, uh, given the um, 
for them. So, um, but March is a long time from now. Um, Runner, the time passes very rapidly, and I appreciate the court not asking questions I can't answer. I think if I had an end of April deadline for that one witness, I think we could make that deadline. So uh, understanding this is a, a mitigation expert, um, Thompson, uh, how concerned are you about getting that disclosure closer to trial? Closer to trial is somewhat relative. The end of April sounds like it would be on the eve of trial from the date the court is proposing. I think that would be, I'm not sure that would be realistic. Um, and again, I, I'm not in a position to second guess sure. uh, what um, Ms. Taylor and her team are representing to the court. I, she had told us some time back that one of her experts had some health issues. And I think that she did tell us that that person had passed away and they were working on a replacement. Um, if, if we are looking at uh, a mitigation disclosure at the end of April, I don't know that we could be ready um, with all the trial prep, final trial preparation for a May trial. I just, I hate to say that, I feel like sure. cutting my own throat in a sense, but that's realistic. Well, I can do one of two things. I can uh, set a separate hearing uh, ex parte to explore this further, but I don't, frankly don't know how far that's going to get me. I mean, I can set a date and my experience tells me that date will be complied with uh, regardless, right? Um, yeah, 24 hours in a day, but if you use enough of those hours, uh, enough days in a row, you get it done if you have to. At the same time, I don't want to uh, put unrealistic um, deadlines. And so um, I can do that. I can have an ex parte hearing uh, or we can go ahead and reserve September. I will throw it to you, Mr. Thompson, is what you want, what you would advocate for. Yard, could I have just a moment? Your Honor, we would trust the court to do the ex parte hearing, see what's there and make the best decision and tell us what the expectations are. Um, well, do you want to do that later today or you want to do it tomorrow? You need more time. You want to come back next week? Runner, I had planned to leave town today. I um, have other case related obligations tomorrow. I could do it as soon as this hearing is over if the court has time or I can come back next week um, at the court's convenience. Um, I think we'll probably be finished in here by three. If we were to do it immediately after, are you comfortable with that? Does that give you enough time to get to the airport? Yes, I, I believe it will, Your Honor. All right. Well, we'll 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 give that a shot. Um. All right. If uh. Well, if I move this one way or the other, I will adjust the various deadlines that are in here. Um, I won't uh, adjust the next deadline that you have, understanding that you may be already committed to it, which I think is the motions related to the defense's motion uh, regarding the death penalty, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the next set of hearings that we have? Those are now scheduled. 
I believe that our briefs are due the 10th of next month uh, with a hearing later this fall and a reply brief deadline for the defense. And we are on track to meet those deadlines, Your Honor. I'm sorry, you were saying, counsel? Your Honor, I'm guessing the court has received our motions already. I believe we were set for November the 7th. Um, I think the state's deadline for discovery has uh, passed. Has the state complied with its discovery obligations, including those outlined in judge judge's uh, last order and other orders? We have, Your Honor. And in fact, uh, Ms. Jennings prepared a lengthy summary of all the discovery that was filed with the Latah County Court when our discovery deadline hit. Um, it is lengthy, but there's a lot of discovery. Sure. Um, we recognize How that- much of the, what did you say, 300 gigabytes? 398 since August 3rd. How much of that is new information? Uh, Ms. Jennings could speak to that. Ms. Jennings, can you speak to that? Um, Your Honor, the defense was given, and I'm not sure if this is what they're referencing, but they were given um, a copy of the OneDrive um, from the FBI. Um, most of that was cumulative um, discovery that they had already received in another fashion. I'm sure there were portions of it that was new information. Um, I, I don't, I've not calculated how much of that was new. Um, so I can only rely on Ms. Taylor's. Um, what she's represented to the court on that. Well, I don't think she knows because it doesn't sound like she's looked at it yet. Not all of it, Judge. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I will uh, talk when we're finished here with Ms. Taylor um, uh, without uh, the state present in a closed hearing. Um, what else do we need to talk about today or do you want to talk about today? Uh, nothing comes to mind right now, Judge. I know that there will be plenty of opportunity for other discussions. Um, as far as your meeting with defense ex parte, do you want the state for any reason to stay around or would you like us to get on the road back to Moscow? Are you on, are you uh, uh, flying or driving? Driving. Okay. Well, why don't you hang around just in case we need to, uh, if, the, if I'm able to make a decision based on that, I can inform you what that is at least. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything further, um, other than your um, penal, your motions regarding the death penalty, do you have any outstanding motions and the motion as it relates to Mr. Uh, Koberger's attire? Your Honor, there's no outstanding motions right now. I do anticipate um, filing several motions in the motion to compel deadline. Uh, as far as discovery goes, I anticipate there may be some follow-up motions. I, of course, will first try to speak with the prosecutor to resolve those. Um, I think you will find I'm, I'm probably um, more inclined to hear things more quickly than you're perhaps accustomed to in this case. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, it'd probably be more along the usual, you know, 14 day uh, timeline with respect to motions. If there's a lot that needs to be done with respect to them, we can talk about that, but okay. On that point, Your Honor, um, as you can see, we're they're a multifaceted team, sure. and on motions, we try to assign them to specific attorneys. Uh, on various motions, would it be acceptable to the court for those attorneys who are not actively arguing the motions to be able to participate remotely, or would you like us to be present? We're happy to do either. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just uh, prefer those that are going to be arguing to be here just because it makes it easier uh, to uh, uh, have that dialogue. So. Sure. Okay, thank you. The others, if they want to appear uh, remotely, that's fine. Thank you. And same for defense as well, depending on what defense wants to do. Okay. All right. Um, then uh, if there's nothing else this morning or this afternoon, I guess we will uh, be adjourned and have a discussion in a few minutes. All right. Thank you. Back in a few minutes once the courtroom is cleared. All right.